What's up guys and welcome to my ranking of all of the Michael Myers actors. Now I did this ranking three years ago when 2018 came out. I've added a couple of names to this list. Uh, an actor that I didn't include in the last one as well as an actor that has popped up in Halloween Kills. And then obviously we have to talk about an updated ranking as far as where James Jude Courtney falls now that we have two performances from him. Did he go up? Did he go down? It's going to be interesting. So if you are a Halloween fan, if you're a Michael Myers fan, definitely hit that subscribe button. I've already done a couple of rankings updated from Halloween Kills. I've ranked all of the masks. I've ranked the franchise. We're doing this video. Later on today, we're doing a live commentary, me and CP, of Halloween Kills. So you guys can watch along and talk about the movie with us. And CP is going to give us some insight onto what has changed since the test screening where he initially saw the film. So that's going to be interesting. Hoping to get an autop stream tomorrow, but we'll see. And then at the end of this week, we're going to be talking about the top 10 moments from the Halloween franchise. So plenty of Halloween content. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button. Now, number 10 for me is very easy. And I'll be honest, this is kind of unfair, but everybody wanted me to throw this name on last time. They were asking where it was. So here it is. Number 10 is Tony Moran. Now, this guy only played Michael Myers in one scene. For those that don't know, uh, the original 1978 film, the scene where, you know, Laurie's sticking him with the coat hanger and pulling his mask off and all that stuff in the third act. There's a moment where the mask gets pulled off and then Michael Myers shows his human face for about two seconds before he puts the mask back on. That's Tony Moran. That's all he contributed to that original film as far as history shows. So, in a way, I think it's unfair to rank him. That's why I didn't do it in the last video. He's kind of bringing a toothpick to a gunfight with people that got to play him for an entire movie. But if he's on this list, this is where he goes. Number 10. Now, moving forward with all of these, the criteria that I'm looking at on how I'm ranking these Myers is the performance, of course, the look of Michael Myers, both with the mask and the costume or anything that they decided to add or take away to that, and how the movie utilized that character. Now, different movies, you've utilized Myers in different ways. We all have our own personal preference on that, so that's why this ranking is interesting to me. And number nine, with those criteria in mind for me, is easily Don Shanks. Now, this is 90% because I cannot stand Halloween 5. Halloween 5 is my least favorite of the Halloween films. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen my updated ranking or the ranking that I did <laughs> three years ago or the ranking that I did before that. It's always been my least favorite Halloween film. Uh, I think the movie's boring. I don't like the storyline whatsoever. I despise the mask. And, you know, not that Don Shanks does anything that's really egregious here. It's not like he does anything that kind of is a detriment to the character. He just doesn't have anything to work with, unfortunately. So, again, this is kind of unfair to him, possibly, but... I just have to be honest, his Michael Myers does absolutely nothing for me because of everything that surrounds him. And he doesn't necessarily add anything to the Michael Myers character either. He just kind of takes bits and pieces from what everybody else did. There's nothing that really stands out to me about his performance. So number nine easily for me is Don Shanks. Number eight beating him out by just a razor thin margin is going to be Brad Lurie. Now this is the guy that played Michael Myers in Halloween Resurrection. Now that is most people's least favorite Halloween film. And it's just above my least favorite for just a couple of reasons. When I saw this, I was like 10, 11 years old. I didn't really have a whole lot of expectations walking into this. I knew it wasn't great, but I was entertained enough with just a stupid slasher movie. And I've always been able to watch this and be entertained for what it is. A really bad 2000 slasher movie that just happens to have Michael Myers in it. Uh, but just like with Don Shanks, a lot of the reason why he is this low is because of the movie that he's in. I mean, Resurrection is, is unforgivable for what they did to Laurie in the beginning, which I understand Jamie Lee Curtis's motivation for that. But nonetheless, story-wise, you fucked up H2O. Can't forgive that. The, the whole thing with Buster Rhymes, where Buster Rhymes is literally insulting Michael to his face, making him out to be a little bitch, and he doesn't do anything about it. Then they have a fight scene where he's, you know, karate kicking him in the face and electrocuting his balls and everything. This movie, as far as how they treat the character Michael Myers, is the worst of the franchise because they make him an entire joke. I don't mind the mask as much. I think that it was an improvement from H2O. I still don't like the eyebrows being defined, but I think that they light it a lot better. I think that they hide the eyes much better, although they could still do a little bit better work with that. So there are some small redeeming qualities to his portrayal of Michael Myers, but unfortunately he portrayed him in Resurrection. So 
Here you go. Number seven is Chris Durand. Now he's the one that played him in H2O. And I gotta be honest, even though he is low on this list, I think that he gets way too much flack for his portrayal of Michael Myers. Now I am a fan of H2O. I am a defender of H2O, so keep that in mind. Some of you guys that despise that movie, see my bottom three. I mean, I understand why you put him so low on your list for that reason, but I don't think that his portrayal of Michael Myers and his walk and his mannerisms and the, the presence that he has in the movie is nearly as bad as people make it out to be. They make it out like he just made a complete joke of the character. I'll never understand that. I think that there are shades of the first couple of Halloween movies that are supposed to be a timeline in this. There are shades of what Nick Castle did. There are shades of what Don, uh, Dick Warlock did. And if it wasn't for that horrendous mask, all of the masks, with the exception of the Halloween 6 one that was in one scene, if it wasn't for that mask, I think that his Michael Myers would have been received a lot better. But unfortunately, he's the one that gets to walk around like this the whole damn movie. Uh, why they decided to light up his eyes like that, I have no idea. Why they, the mask is just something that they have fucked up so many times that it, it makes my balls hurt just trying to think about it. But Chris Durand as a performance, I like him. Unfortunately, he's got a horrible mask and they could have used him a lot more in H2O and made that movie a little bit more epic than it was. It's a very short, quick 85 minute movie, whatever it is. So. This is where he goes. Number six is Dick Warlock from Halloween 2, the original one from 1981. Now, I like the mask here. Obviously, for those that know your Halloween history, it's the same exact mask from the original film, but his face was wider, so it just alters the way that the mask looks a little bit, but I like the way that it looks in Halloween 2. I like the, uh, the, the way that they utilize the character of Michael Myers is very, very, very in line with what they did in 1978. He still kind of moves in the shadows. He still comes out of the darkness. He still has that supernatural edge. He's a lot more brutal in this movie. There's a lot more kills. The kills are ramped up quite a bit, so I enjoy that. You guys know I'm a gore hound. I love my carnage candy. There's a lot of it in Halloween too. The only aspect to his Myers that I hate is the walk. And there's so many scenes where they show him to where he is so stiff and robotic that he literally looks like an animatronic. And I do not like that thing to look, I don't like Michael Myers to look like he's a, a zombie. I mean, there's a scene where he busts through this glass door at the hospital when he's getting shot at, and he just doesn't miss a beat. And he's just sitting there walking forward, just like he's an animatronic on some kind of a program set. And I just, no, you gotta have some human element to Michael Myers. I think that makes him scarier. When he just looks like some kind of a demon in a mask or a zombie, that takes away from it for me. So that one element right there actually brings him all the way down here. Otherwise, he might be top three. Number five is gonna be Aaron Armstrong. This is the guy that played Michael in the 1978 flashback sequence in Halloween Kills. Now, admittedly, I'm coming down still from how excited and how much I enjoyed that sequence both times that I watched this movie. That's by far my favorite part of the movie, easily. So is it a little unfair to judge him against people that played him for an entire movie or multiple movies when he only had about 10 minutes to play the character? Possibly, but damn did the impact of that 10 minutes really hit me. So fuck it, it's my list and I'm being honest with you, this is how much I liked his portrayal. Uh, I didn't even know that it was a different actor the first time that I watched the film. After I found that out, uh, I was kind of fascinated and wanted to see who it was and what else he has done. Uh, Aaron Armstrong playing the 1978 shape in that sequence, I thought he nailed everything perfectly. I mean, not only did they nail the look of Myers, the mask is damn near identical to the William Shatner mask to the point where I didn't even bother ranking it in my mask ranking because it's, it's identical to me. So it would have been the exact same commentary that I gave to the Nick Castle mask. So for the thousand of you that asked that question over the past couple of days, that's why it wasn't on that list. To me, it's the same exact mask. Uh, the, the overalls, I mean, even just the, uh, or the coveralls, not overalls, even down to just the walk and the way that they lit him, the way that they shot him, the way that they utilized Myers in that flashback was brilliant. I mean, it was so, uh, it was bathed in so much love for that original film that it just charmed the hell out of me. Now, as far as his actual performance, obviously I just said the walk and all the mannerisms are perfect, but I even like the way that the, he's brutal and he's tough, but it's very subdued. You know, if it had had him like slicing people's throats open or, you know, twisting heads off or anything in that flashback, it would have fucked it up immediately because it 
the tone and the approach of that original film was much, much more subdued. The gore was not there. And uh, him busting out of that closet door and grabbing that cop and doing the old fashioned strangulation thing that Myers did a lot in that original movie, was perfect. I mean, he looked like he was tough. He looked like he was going to whoop some ass. And the fact that, like, you know, the, the cop, uh, or Hawkins shot him and he just drops him and then just nonchalantly walks away. Like, all of those little tiny nuances of his performance of trying to replicate Nick Castle, I just thought was on point. So I loved what he did. If after Halloween ends, they ever decided to go back and do other Halloween films or different timelines or possibly even do some period piece stuff back in the 70s and, you know, carry on that one night even forward, get Aaron Armstrong. I want to see more out of the guy. Number four for me is going to be George P. Wilbur. This is the guy that played Michael Myers in Halloween 4 and Halloween 6. Now, I used to have him slightly higher. But upon rewatch of this franchise recently, there's things about Halloween 4 and the way that they utilize the character, especially the look. It's mostly the look that unfortunately has to drop him down. Getting the positive out of the way, I think that Halloween 6, as far as how Myers is used, is badass. That's one of the best Myers ever. Like the look, the, the ferocity, the way that he's lit, the way that he is edited, the atmosphere, the mask, even his physicality and the brutality of the kills. I love what George P. Wilbur does in Halloween 6. He's the best part of that movie that has a lot of problems outside of him. Halloween 4 is a much better movie than Halloween 6, but Michael Myers looks fucking ridiculous. It's one of the worst, most embarrassing masks in this franchise. How they had a big budget movie that went forward with that is beyond me. That is my biggest negative with the movie is the mask. But even the rest of the look of Michael Myers, if you watch that movie, they actually put like football or hockey pads underneath his coveralls to like give him more shoulders. He just looks stupid. It just looks dumb. It lo even when he walks or when he stands, it just, he looks like fucking Herman Munster or something like that. It just, it, it bothers me. Every single scene that I see Michael, there's always something that's just taken out of it a little bit because of the look of Michael. But his physical performance is good in Halloween 4. So, I don't know, you get to see two different shades. I, I really wish that I could like invent a time machine and go back and just take the fucking hockey pads out, give him a better mask and say, okay, make the movie you were going to make. Cause I think Halloween four would raise like maybe two or three spots in my ranking just because of that. Like it's that ridiculous to me and holds it back that much. But Halloween six, man, George P. Wilbur, that fucking dude's badass. Speaking of bad motherfuckers, number three is Tyler Maine. This is Rob Zombie's uh, Michael Myers. Now this guy, I understand a lot of you that despise those movies have him low on the list for that reason. I get it. Uh, I understand a lot of you don't like the approach of the character to where he is definitively human. I think this is the only timeline in the Halloween franchise. You know, I don't want to speak too soon. We'll see what they do with Halloween ends. I think this is the only timeline where Michael Myers is definitively human. There's nothing supernatural about him whatsoever. He's just really fucking strong. Uh, so people don't really care for that. Uh, I understand that some aspects to his character, like the brutality, like in Halloween 2 especially, people t don't like him taking off the mask and having a... Uh, mask that's torn open and especially if you watch the director's cut which is the worst cut he says a word at the end he says die michael myers talks can't defend that but everything outside of that if you are into the tone and the approach that rob zombie took with these movies which i like the last third of his original movie which is where tyler main gets to shine and I am one of the nine people on planet Earth that actually likes and defends Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 for how bold that it is. I appreciate the approach that he took because it was so different. I think Rob Zombie knew that when he walked into this that he was not going to be able to do what John Carpenter did. And he didn't want to do what John Carpenter did because that already existed. I've said before, if you're going to remake a classic, you better take it in a bold new direction. Doesn't always pay off, your movie might be horrible, but I would rather have a movie try and fail than just wash, rinse, repeat what's already been proven and then fail for that reason. So I appreciate that he tries to do something different. Not all of it works for me either. But Tyler Maine, his performance is brutal, it's ferocious, it's terrifying. Like of any of the Michael Myers on this list, this is the one that I would want to be fucking me up the least because it would be the most painful death ever. Uh, he is snapping bones and he is stabbing the shit out of people. He displays his victims and, and all this stuff that I like about certain aspects of Michael. So I, I, I like 
this brutal, ferocious version of Michael Myers. It's kind of more of a Jason Voorhees flavor of Michael Myers, but I do like it. So Tyler Main for me is number three. Now we are at the top two. Of course, it's the same top two. I don't even think that it's any competition outside of these two guys for who does the best portrayal of Michael Myers and who has been utilized the best as far as on screen Michael Myers. Now, since Halloween Kills, we now have two performances from James Jude Courtney and Nick Castle only has the one in 1978. And he's going to be at number two for me. He's going to be at number two for me. Despite all the problems that I have with Halloween Kills, James Jude Courtney is fucking awesome, and I'll get to him in a second. Nick Castle is the shape. Nick Castle is the shape for many people, and he will always be the shape. And up until a week ago, he was for me too. Uh, and to a, a, to a certain extent, if I could rank both these guys number one, I would. I think that they're both equally brilliant for different reasons. But Nick Castle's Michael Myers is that classic, original approach to the character that I absolutely adore. And it was the way that the movie utilizes Michael that almost kept him in number one for me. Because I do like that approach the best. The one that John Carpenter did to where he is human, he is supernatural, he is a force like the wind, he disappears and reappears, and you just never quite get a handle on what this guy is or who he is. And he just kills and exists because. I think that that is the best, most terrifying, and most effective use of the character. The only aspect to him that dropped him to number two for me is that the brutality and the kills side of his Michael Myers has not aged so well because the original 1978 film is pretty tame. I mean, it's pretty tame for slasher standards even in the 80s. So uh, the fact that we just basically get a bunch of strangulations, we get you know one throat slit that I'll admit to you until like maybe two or three years ago, I always thought he just strangled her and snapped her neck. I never even saw the knife. Somebody pointed that out to me the last time I reviewed the film. So <laughs> that's something in and of itself right there. Uh, but that's a nitpick. Uh, that's just something because I'm a carnage candy guy that, that doesn't age so well for me. But everything else, the walk, the, the presence of the character, of course the look, I mean that classic William Shatner mask and the coveralls and everything, that, that is the classic Michael Myers. I love everything about his Myers. I love everything about his approach and I love everything about the utilization of the character. But my number one edged him out just a little bit by Halloween Kills and Halloween 2018. And who knows, by Halloween ends, maybe I'll hate what they do with him and he'll bump back down or maybe I'll be like, nope, it's not even a contest anymore. He's easily number one. James Jude Courtney to me finds that perfect balance. And the way that they utilize the character is that really nice balance to me. I could use more supernatural to him, but we'll, again, we'll see what they do in ends. They're nudging him in that direction. He has that classic shape walk, that classic shape approach, the way that they light him, the way that they try to build some atmosphere around him, and they're more successful in 2018 than they are in kills, in my opinion. Um, but the brutality of his Myers, to me, really does feel like a natural new generation of the Nick Castle Mike Myers. Like, it's the same approach, but he's just much more mean about it and he's much more experimental and, and to be honest with you the element of halloween kills that nudged him up to number one for me was going back to that childlike curiosity going back to the displaying of the victims and just all those really weird aspects to that original take of michael myers that felt like it's been missing since 78. i mean whenever he's stabbing that guy on the table and he kind of looks at the knife and then turns around and grabs another one and then stabs him again and looks at it and then turns around and grabs another one. You're like, what is he doing? Is he like, is he seeing which knife stabs the cleanest? Is he trying to display like a porcupine piece of art? Like, is he trying to see how many times I could stab this guy before he loses his last breath? Like, what's going on? And that's just so creepy to me. And the whole thing about displaying his victims comes back to where he displays the victims in the park with the Halloween three masks. And he displays uh, the Johns, Big John and Little John, to be a mirror image of the photograph that they have up and puts a record on for him and everything. It's just, I love it. I love everything about this version of Myers. Now, those of you guys that know, I don't necessarily love the movies that he's in. There's a lot of issues that I had with 2018. Some were fixed. And there's a lot of issues that I have with kills, and I don't think they're going to be fixed in ends, but I'd be a fool to say that it's impossible. So I think that he could be in better films. He certainly could have better writers using his Michael Myers, but as far as his portrayal and the look of his Myers, and that's my favorite mask, by the way, in 2018, 
I think that he is my favorite now. He is number one. So as far as I'm concerned, top Michael Myers, James Jude Courtney. So what do you guys think? What is your ranking of the Michael Myers actors? Please let me know down below. Let me know your reasons why. Don't just give me a list. It's always more interesting to hear why. Or if you just want to give me your favorite and your least favorite, that'll be cool too. But let me know all your thoughts down below. Please like and share this video to get some more eyes on it, get some new subscribers. If you are watching me for the first time, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss all of the future Halloween content coming over the next week or so. Told you all about it at the beginning, but we got a couple more rankings coming. We've got a commentary tonight. We've got a live stream tomorrow with a couple of guys talking about all of our thoughts. We've got three very different takes on this movie. And by the end of Halloween, or by the end of October, we're gonna be talking about the Crow franchise. And we're also going to be ending with 31 on 31. If you don't know what 31 on 31 is, check out this channel with the subscribe button and go educate yourself because 31 on 31 is going to be exciting this year. Thank you for watching as always, guys. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.